Evening ladies and gents, my name is Simon Brown. So this is the second in our, in our trading masterclass. We kicked off uh, late last year, beginning of this year, with the boot camps, which was more the methodology behind the trading and the like. And those 12 videos are online and available. So now we're moving on to the much more hard, practical part of the, of the process. Um, last month, we did the CFD trading plan, where we looked at, at trading equities, uh, fairly gentle, fairly uh, unaggressive, and that's always going to be my particular trading style. There are a couple of things that are going to be key to it. I am not a aggressive trader. That's not my style. I also don't think it's, it's viable. I think if you're an aggressive trader, sooner or later, you're going to crash and burn. It's just a, a, it's a case of, of when, not if. Um, I'm, I'm always going to try and catch trends. I'm never going to do counter trends. I'm not going to do swings. I'm not going to trade the ranges. I don't like breakouts. And I'm not saying that those aren't viable ways to trade. I just like trend trading. The problem with catching trends is that you'll often get a lot of fake trades. When I say fake trades, small trade, small loss, trade, loss, trade, loss, until eventually a trend comes. If you've been trading uh, top 40 Aussie future over the last two years, pretty much we are where we were in May of 2014. So two years and three months, what's that, 27 months We've pretty much gone sideways. Now, in truth, there's been some nice movement in that. The range has probably been, I don't know, 10%, 15%, in fact. Um, but it's been tough. It, it's certainly for trend traders, this has been a, a, a tough space. You can solve that problem by time frames, and we'll touch on that uh, uh, this evening. Each of these sessions is in two parts. This evening is the first part, looking at index trading. Uh, two weeks' time, which is 29 August. Uh, we do the follow-up, we, we do a lunchtime webcast, again, recorded. And what we do with that is we go and look at more practical. This evening is theory, there's some practical examples, but in two weeks' time when we do that webcast, we go and physically do the practical component of it. We, we go and, and, and scour the charts and set up the, the alerts, etc. I talk about that this evening, but I'm working off screenshots. Um, and then we continue for the rest of the year, September. We're doing reversal patterns, uh, kangaroo tails, island reversals, and engulfing candles, which are my three preferred. October, we're doing binary options, uh, partly because that's nice and close to the election uh, in the US, and you can do political binary options, but also because binary options are certainly gaining popularity, um, and there are, there's no polite way of saying it, there are a lot of scammers out there. This evening is back to rules-based. The beauty of rules-based is this whole thing can be set up in alerts, so you don't have to worry about anything. And in fact, we can take it a step further and we can get the system to trade it for us. That's what we will do in the webcast. I'm going to set this up so that the system trades for us. One or two things will happen. Either there'll be an explosion in a black hole somewhere in the universe, um, or there'll be an explosion in a great big you know, pile of cash somewhere in the universe. So what are we looking at this evening? Index trading. I like index trading. I, I haven't traded equity, and I say I haven't traded. I hardly do any equity trading because I don't like the volatility. You know, Anglo Gold Ashanti's lost, what, 11, 12% in two days um, on the back of results, which, well, the market says were ugly, whatever they were, is neither here nor there. I'm just, you know, shares are too volatile. You know, one little chirp, one little sense announcement, one little Brexit and the whole share. I mean, look at Capco and many, many other examples. So I, long time ago, steered away from, from equity. And the other reason is just for disclosure purposes in my media work. You know, it's one thing, uh, it, it, I disclose what I own, but if I'm also trading equity, it starts to get messy. So I do trade a little bit of equity in a, in a, in a, in a momentum portfolio, which is, which is on the website and they're all disclosed and the like. But mostly I'm an index trader. Indices are less volatile. You know, when last did our market, did our index do a 2% move in one day? I think, and now I can't remember the numbers, I think we've done four 2% moves this month and they all happened in Jan, Feb. Um, last year, the entire year, we did five 2% moves in a day. Now the immediate, we say, well, how are we going to make money if, it's not moving 2% in a day. But remember that 2% cuts both ways. We all have optimism bias. We all say the 2% move, we will be on the right side of the equation, and ergo, we will make money. The stark reality is that we could be on the wrong side of the equation, and therefore we lose the money. So I, you know, and as a trend trader, what's my favorite trade? The trade I get into that just goes and goes and goes, and I can stay in for as long as possible. Now, how do we do that? Well, we give it some space in the stop loss. But you don't want to give it too much space because that hurts. So you give it some space in the stop loss. 
and then you just trade something that's less volatile. So when you catch a trend, you can really ride it. I did an Aussie trade last year, which ran from early October to July. So, sorry, early April through to July. So April, May, June, almost four months in one position. That's my favorite type of trade. Because when you enter a trade, what happens? Well, you've got to pay fees. So you've got costs. You've got to cross spreads. You've got costs. You've got potential slippage. More costs. And you're far away from your stop loss. Your maximum distance from your stop loss. So I want to do as few trades as possible. My index trading, my target is 12 trades a year. One trade per month is my target. And I'm, I'm averaging about that. In fact, it's slightly on the, on the higher side. It's probably closer to 15. Um, and it hasn't been a great system over the last uh, year and change. But that's why I like indices and certainly why we're touching it in this evening. The system we're looking at this evening is a system I traded in 2005-2006. I spent about 20 months day trading, uh, trading initially 5 and 15 minute charts and then moving to 15 and 60 minute charts. The system worked beautifully, it made me money. There was one problem, um, is that it was like having a job. And I was getting to my desk at 8 o'clock in the morning and so the market runs 8.30 to 5.30. I was at my desk at 8 o'clock in the morning, market closed at 5.30, I would have admin half an hour, hour, maybe hour and a half of admin. I was working an 11 hour day. And it's not that I wasn't making money, it's just that I was working an 11 hour day and I was, I was mind numbingly bored. I always say, good trading is boring. The problem is when you do it for 11 hours, it kills you. You know, my wife would come home and say, how was your day? And I, I, the question would confuse me. Because, you know, I try, no, <laughs> and not because I'm a D oak from Durban, but it would confuse me because, in truth, you know, I'd done well in that I traded well. You know, perfect trade. Forget profit, perfect trade. But, man, had I had fun? No. Now, this predated things such as Twitter and Facebook. But understand that when you're trading in that type of, particularly in a, in a five minute, uh, which I quickly abandoned, but even in a 15 minute chart, you can't even make a phone call because you will lose track of time and you will miss entries. So you sit and do. I mean, when I was trading 5 and 15, I had to stop drinking coffee because I couldn't take toilet breaks. Now, I understand, for me, not drinking coffee, I, I, I changed my time frames. Um, and so this is the system that I did trade back then. There are multiple ways of doing it in terms of time frames. We will delve into that. So it's an index system. We can use it on any of the major global indices. In truth, we could use it on minor indices and sub-indices, and I will delve uh, into those. We do long or short. I, do, I, as a rule, don't short equities. And if you look at the CFD trading plan we did last month, uh, we don't do shorts. We only do longs. When the market is crashing, we move to cash. You know what? That's fine. Market crashes, you're in cash, market does minus 20 or 30, you're in cash. That's called winning because you did zero. I know this theory is there's money to be made on the downside, but short trading is tough because of the speed and because of the volatility. You get it right and it goes 5% one day and you think you're a genius and the next day it goes 7% against you and you get stopped out. And then what does it do as soon as you're out? Collapses in a heap. You know, go look at African Bank. It was not a straight line. I mean, it felt like it at times, but it, it went from 40 Rand to 30 cents, and it zigzagged all over the place uh, in, in, in process. 2% uh, per trade, that gets, we'll come to that part. There is a dedicated video on that. Portfolio gearing, uh, we're using guaranteed stops, so that's not a worry there. As always, two-step entry system. I nearly always, I want to say always, but I'm going to <coughs> clarify it and say nearly always I do two-step entry system. What do I mean by that? So I get a trigger that says enter trade, but then there's something else that I need to confirm. So in my lazy system, it's quite simple. I get the trigger to buy. The confirmation is, is the next candle higher? If it is, I'm in. I'm always looking for that two-step. Why? Reduces the number of trades. And what it means, if the trigger fails, well, that's fine then you wait for it to re-trigger again. So if it does run, you will be on the bus. But it means you don't get in the bus that breaks down just around the corner. So it keeps you out of trades. So always a two-step entry process. 721 moving crossover. I just use simple moving averages here. No weighted, no exponentials, no fancy whatsoever. And next candle confirms. So quick, I'll show you some pictures, but quick explanation. So the 7 moves up through the 21. 
That's your trigger candle. Where that candle closes, mark it. The next candle that closes higher, you want to be long. Whether that is the immediate candle or whether it's five, six, eight candles later. As long as the seven is above the 21, next candle higher, you enter trade. And I'll show you some hard examples of it, so don't stress that. Uh, and we exit at stop loss. A couple of important points. Works in any time frame from five minute to weekly. Certainly the best time frames have been 15 and 60 minute or daily. Um, and if you, if you want to short term trade it, I mean to me the 60 minute is, is, is about the best chart to use in this. But it will work across the different time frames. Absolutely it does. Any, any robust trading system will work across time frames. The difference is as you shorten that time frame, you, you do more trades. The trades have smaller profits, and in theory, they have smaller losses. But if we're not good in our stop loss, what we can do is have more trades, smaller losses, but bigger, sorry, smaller profits, but bigger losses. But a thing, of, you know, we use guaranteed stops here so that we can manage those stops very, very efficiently in that sense there. Um, so you can do it within the day trading, or you can move it to what I call lazier trading, move it to daily charts um, and, and the like. It works on weekly charts, but my lazy system is more reliable and gives better trade signals if we want to go to weekly charts. Important point, we're trading indices. So we're not trading rands and cents, we're trading points. When you look at the buy and the sell, it is index points. Now, each point is going to be worth a rand, and if your contract is 10 rand a point, then every one rand move makes or loses your point. So if you were to buy at 45.33.9, and it went up 100 points, you'd make 100 rand per contract, if your contra per, per contract point. So the contracts at IG are either 2 rand a point or 10 rand a point. So if you're in a 10 rand a point contract, and you buy at 45.33.9, and you sell at 45.439, you make 100 points, 10 rand a point, 1,000 rand. If you get it wrong, lose 1,000 rand. But it's not the rands and cents. You're not paying 453 rand for the contract. You're paying the points. The, the price you pay is actually not. What you pay is margin. Remember, you're paying margin. You're trading a geared product. So the value of this, if you're trading 10 rand a point, is technically 45,000 and change times 10 rand, 453,000 rand. That is your ultimate exposure. Let's call it half a million to round it off. If you buy that index and it went to zero in the next second, you owe half a million rand. There are two issues on that. Firstly, um, if you've got a guaranteed stop in place, no problem. Secondly, if our index goes to zero, you have bigger problems. <laughs> no, man, the sun has just crashed into Europe and you are 12 minutes away from a fireball of death. Do not phone IG support and say, I can't pay. Go out there and spend what little money you have in the last 12 minutes because you are about to die. <laughs> well, they're about to die too, so it's all moot. <laughs> um, what is fun is that you can go long or short. Now I take the fun back. What you can do is long or short. Going long is when you buy and you make money on the upside. Short is when you sell what you don't own and make money on the downside. So in this situation here, you're looking at the market and you think this market's going down. You've got a sell signal. So you step in and you sell at 45.321. And the market falls 100 points. When you sell, your position is now minus one. It falls 100 points. You've got minus 100 points, you've got minus one contract, boom, you've got 100 points in profit. And there's no, you know, if you've got, if you're trading straight equities, you can't go into minuses. But here it's just a case of, if you think it's going down, you sell it. If you're right, you make that profit on the downside. So we can trade just as easily, long or short. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. The point with going short is you sell what you don't own, you buy it back lower, and you make the difference. Or you sell what you don't own and you buy it back higher and you lose the difference. Nice and simple. Um, primarily three contracts. I'm going to delve into those in more in a moment. So we can park that there for now. So what are the indices? So, I mean, within the local, 
IG platform, there's SA40, which tracks top 40. As soon as you go into the global platform, I stopped counting because there were, there were tons. There were tons of indices. You can go and trade Taiwan, China, you can, uh, you know, Australia. Uh, I mean, more countries we have heard of, but countries we'd never thought of trading. And the point being is the key indices globally are going to be S&P 500, FTSE 100, Nikkei 225. And someone said to me, you can't trade the Nikkei 225, it's like 60% down in the last 40 years. Of course you can trade it. I mean, we're traders. We don't care where it was in 1986. We don't even care where it was on Monday, unless we're long or short. We care about where it is right now. That's what our focus is. So those are the key. If you wanted to add extras to that, you've got DAX, you've got Australia. Uh, we can add other, bring other indices into it. Uh, the the, the S&P, of course, there's also the Dow 30. Um, which I, so IG uses US 500 FTSE in Japan 225. There's also the Dow. I don't trade the Dow. Some people trade it because it's it's um, more leveraged in a sense. It's got more buck, bang per buck because it's a much higher value index. But, and they kind of track. But I mean, to me, if you're going to trade a US index, trade S&P 500. If you want a second US index, go trade the Russell 2000, which is their small cap index. Their small cap index has... 2,000 shares in it. Yeah. Our market has 450. Um, so, and, and, and I'm going to talk about it, but let's say it right now. My advice, start with top 40. Once you've aced that, we can start moving to the other different indices out there. So, NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ, yeah. So, so the, 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 my point with the U.S. is pick Dow Jones, NASDAQ, or S&P. They broadly move the same. So Dow Jones and, and, and S&P almost in lockstep. NASDAQ, there is difference. And we certainly saw NASDAQ peak in 2001 and then take 15 years to peak again. Um, but if we look at the constituents, and you know, particularly with Dow, with Apple and the like, the difference to my mind, they're too similar. What we want to do if we're trading indices is try and find indices that are nice and different. And that means I wouldn't trade top 40 and FTSE 100 because far too many of our top 40 stocks are part of FTSE 100 and we follow FTSE 100. In fact, the best lead market we have is the FTSE 100. If you want to know what our market's going to be doing in five minutes time, look at what the FTSE is doing right now. Um, so you, you watch a five minute FTSE chart and if the FTSE starts to run, take a position on the top 40 and it will follow fairly, fairly shortly. That relationship is going to start to break down with SAB leaving, because obviously they're in both and they were quite significant in both. And then when Old Mutual finally gets their act together and breaks themselves into pieces and stuff, it'll break down a little bit further. So my preferred is uh, S&P uh, local and then Nikkei 225. And then if you want a European index, you can go trade the DAX which is the German index. It's German, but it's European index. It's a, really a, a European. I mean, the Germans will tell you it's German, but it's got a lot of French in there. No, don't tell them it's got French in there. <laughs> what do we have, though, is something called continuous trading. So much as our market closes at 5.30, IG continue to make prices. Now, we'll look at some examples of those prices. Typically, once the U.S. goes to sleep, those continuous markets go to sleep as well. Um, they don't really respond much to Asia unless, of course, you're trading the K225. Uh, two different indices, uh, SA Cash and then SA. So SA Cash just tracks the top 40, and then the SA is tracking the Aussie futures. Uh, that obviously, therefore, has an expiry date because uh, Aussie futures expire, and you will notice that the, the cash is, is, is typically lower. On expiry date, they will be the same. And you know, with three months to go, they'll be 300 odd points ahead or something like that. Which one you trade? Yeah, neither here nor there. Um, in the example I've used here, I've used a mini, so it's pretty much a, a moot. But yeah, is there a massive difference? No, trade the cash one. If you want to trade the, 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 the one based on the Aussie, it's going to give you the same broad signals, so not to worry. The biggest challenge is time frames. So South African market, notwithstanding continuous trading, South African market is 8.30 to 5.30, Nikkei is 9 to 3, and they take an hour for lunch. I love the Japanese. I want to go live in, they take an hour for lunch, because you know what, hey. Um, so they work five hours. 
<laughs> my kind of day. The problem is if you're trading US who's minus five and you're trading Japan who's plus nine, you're trading across a 14 hour span. I don't know when you plan to sleep, maybe sleep is for other people. Um, and you can hack it. So the hack would be fairly simple is to trade not an hourly chart, but a daily chart or something like that. But time zones are the biggest killer. US not too bad, it's closing late hour, late hour evenings, 10.30, 11.30 at night. Uh, it depends whether you want to have relationships and movies and dinners and stuff like that. Um, but that's perhaps more manageable. Uh, Nikkei 225, to trade an hourly chart on that is difficult because of the time zones. The way, as I said, the way you hack it would be not to do an hourly chart, to do either a four hourly or perhaps even a daily chart. So you get your signals there at uh, 1 p.m. their time, UTC, seven hours ahead of us, so it's about eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, FTSE, of course, pretty much in sync with us, trades 8 to 4 p.m. Uh, U.S. only starts at 9.30, also closes at 4 p.m. Turns out we in South Africa, the Oaks, we work hard. I still remember when our market ran from 10 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Those were the good days. So let's look at the trading system. As I said, catching trends in any time frame. Mechanical, we use simple moving averages. Uh, I call them SMAs. Uh, IG just calls them MAs. 721 moving average, crossover trigger, next candle confirms, uh, exit is in a close below the 21. Um, on the charts, you literally hit uh, technical, you go hit MA, it gives you three options, put your 7, put your 21 in, and you'll get a chart that looks similar to this. Now, I was putting these together, uh, it would have been yesterday. I was pulling these charts out. So this is a hourly chart, SA40, going back to last week, Wednesday-ish, uh, through to Monday. You can see the close over the weekend here. You can also see the continuous trading that's happening after our market is closed. Not a heck lot happening. Uh, ditto, there it happens again. Not a heck lot happening. There it's happening again. Not a heck lot happening. So how does the process? Let's come right to the left. What have we got? We've got eventually our green moving average closes up through the brownie one. That is my 7 going through the 21. That is my trigger. What do I do? I flag the moving the, the candle which, which the trigger happened on. And I say the next candle that closes higher with 7 still above 21. In other words, it's still a valid signal. I need to be long. In other words, I enter at the end of the candle. So it so happens, excuse me, that the immediate next candle confirmed and you enter at the end of the candle because you want to be in when it closes higher. So if you're in a 15, this is a, a, an hour, a, a hourly, yes, hourly. I can't enter 20 minutes into the hour because who knows where it will close. You know, I may be at 50 minutes, you can fudge it, but I market to do crazy stuff. The point is, wait for the end of the hour, and then you enter the position. So you would enter at that point there. So, so do you enter uh, if it's higher than the high or higher than the close? Close. I just want it higher than the close. Yeah. So in truth, I could use a line chart here. I just never use line charts. I, 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 in fact, I mean, I, I, in my trading, I'm always only interested in the closes. But I always like looking at the candles. They tell me more of the story. So it's the close of it there. So that candle there would have been your entry. Your stop loss is the 21. So at this point, uh, and this was around about lunchtime of yesterday, um, you're still running in the trade. You got in at around 45, 100 and change. I've got the exact numbers in a moment. And it's running and you're sitting pretty. You can see some trades that go through the 21. We ignore them. We want to close below the 21. You can be more aggressive if you want and say, if you touch the 21, we will exit. And I'll show you why in a moment why. I, there's pros and cons to both. I'm always going to do the close part. Um, Sorry, Simon, just on that, the candle must go through the 21 or the 7 and 21. Must no, no. So for the stop loss is price through 21. Price. Yeah. Price through 21. Uh, and there we, so, so he has exactly the same chart. And here we're looking at, there's your two red candles, and then literally, boom, boom, the next candle stopped us out. So there was our entry, the circle down at the bottom there. We would have got stopped out at that point up there. Now, a quick disclaimer here. 
what I have, so I went back f almost two weeks of data uh, in an hourly chart, and every signal made me money. Okay, which sounds awesome. Let's be straight. If that was the reality, I wouldn't be here. I would have bought Europe. <laughs> and then I would have bought Japan for my weekends. Actually, no, go to Japan in the weeks because I take lunch hours. Um, you know, no losing trades over a two-week period, of which over that two-week period there were five trades. You know, five out of five is not unheard of, but is, <laughs> it's not how the system is designed. It just so happened that there was quite a purple patch. So in this trade, nice and simple, we entered uh, on the 11th, which was Thursday afternoon, and we got stopped out yesterday afternoon. Uh, boom, what happens next? Almost immediately, we, we, at that point there, we can see the cross. So there's my cross, so now I'm looking for short trades. So here it gets interesting. That green candle there, actually, is where it crosses. So the fact that it's a green candle is neither here nor there, that's my trigger. My confirmation? A close lower, which happens to be that big red candle there. So again, there's an entry, which was at about 45, uh, 380. I've got the numbers. I'll come to that in a second. So there we go short. Here our stop loss is a little bit further away. On this initial trade, on this trade here, your stop loss was close, close. On that trade there, your stop loss is not so close. And it's not far away. It's 100 and 200 odd points. But the stop loss is a little further away. In fact, I think it was 300 and change. Again, I've got the numbers in a moment. It then confirms. So in that big wick candle down there by the red arrow, boom, you're in. Now you're short again. Here's how it plays out. Uh, there was your entry candle. Market then drifts down. And then at 5 o'clock this morning, you got an exit. At 5 o'clock this morning. Um, so that first red candle goes through but doesn't close. The green candle is the one that catches you. And that is a 5 a.m. candle. So you made a small profit here, about 100 points or so. Sorry, so you, you, you're closing on the 21. Uh, sorry, that one there, 21. Yeah. yeah, that's the candle. So the problem is, is it's the 5 o'clock. I mean, it's, so was it the 5 open or close? I can't remember. But it, I mean, you know, any sane person at 5 o'clock in the morning is drinking coffee. You know, you're, you're not or sleeping. I don't know. I'm old school. I'm awake, but I'm, I'm drinking coffee. No, at 5 o'clock, there's things, there's coffee to be drunken, so I'm up. Um, your challenge is, are you looking at the chart? Now, could you be stopped during the night? You could. There are a couple of ways we handle this. Firstly, you know, when you, when you go to bed at night, is you put a hard stop in. So the hard stop is just your protection. In this case, when you go to bed, your hard stop's probably up here somewhere. You were fine, but don't stress it. The bigger issue is, is you can set alerts. And in fact, you can, you can go in and program the trading. We're going to delve with that into a section on its own. But you can set an alert so that at 5 o'clock this morning, what would have happened is your phone would have beeped you. Important point, you have the app loaded on your phone and you've logged on to the IG app on your phone. It will send you the alert to your phone. So at 5 o'clock this morning, when you're thinking about coffee, instead you get beep, beep. And that's cool. I mean, you know, coffee only, actually coffee does take two hands. Um, the trade only takes necessarily one hand. So you can, you can action, you can get your way out of it. But in all the testing, we get very few dark hour trades. We occasionally get those early morning trades, sort of the five, six, seven o'clock in the morning trade, and very seldom. I mean, it's not a common, a common occurrence, but it will happen from time to time. It's not going to be zero and not happening at all. Here's just a quick one looking at the U.S., uh, looking at a 15-minute chart in the U.S. Uh, again, we go back, and for some reason there's no dates on here, but I can tell you that this was back uh, last week as well. There's your cross in the 721 and that green candle. You draw your line. The immediate candle after, therefore, closed up. It's not the, the fact that the next candle was confirming is not always the case. You sometimes might need to wait two or three candles. As long as the moving averages haven't uncrossed, that's not a problem. As soon as they uncross, now you're not looking for a long, now you're looking for a short. So you've got your, your, your entry at that point, fairly uh, ugly chart there. You can see your continuous trading again, and then eventually you got stopped out just here. Uh, on that, you probably, that was, you might have made the princely amount of about five points on the S&P. Don't stress it. S&P, you can trade, is it $50 a point? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, five points. I mean, <laughs> so the point, S&P is a 2,000 point 
index. We are a 45,000 point index. So five points on the S&P is 110, 120 on the, on the top 40 because of the, the relative sizes of them. Um, and that's why so a lot of folks, you know, do you, do you want to trade S&P or Dow Jones? If they're $50 contracts per point, don't trade the Dow Jones because five points on S&P is 120 points in Dow Jones or whatever, 70 points in Dow Jones. I don't know what we're all thinking, but we're going to be on the right side of the trade. But when you're on the wrong side of the trade, it's going to hurt like business. Questions on the system. The other question which a lot of folks, so the question is to which is the best time frame does change. Broadly over time, it was 15 or 60 minutes, uh, then five minute, then daily. I hate I mean, five minute trading is horrendous. The, the trick with five, you know, in, in an hourly chart, if you take 30 seconds to enter the position, you've used um, 0.8 of the, of the candle to enter. In a five minute chart, if you take 10 seconds to enter the position, you've used 3% of the candle. In other words, if you're trading a five minute chart, it's, it, you know, there's no, I mean, it, it, don't just click, click. And I mean, maybe it's old age. I can't click, click that fast. So certainly 15, 15, 60, uh, sorry, 15, 60 were the two preferred. You can take it to daily time frames. Um, you're going to get the drawdowns. Drawdowns potentially as much as, as a 30-odd as a, uh, a percent drawdown. In other words, you've got 100, now you've got 70, and now you've got to make it back again. The drawdowns do get severe. That's trend trading. Any trend trading system is going to have drawdowns. That's just... You know, you're missing the trend or there is no trend, whatever the case may be. There will be drawdowns. They are going to happen. And I think that number stood out for the folks who traded over longer fra time frames, who traded this system for a longer period. Um, I stopped trading because, as I said, remember, I was getting as bored as all heck. Um, I, was I, mean, I was living in Botticelli. I had, I had you know, spotted eagle owls in my garden and stuff, and I knew nothing because I was day trading. It's a good point. So I'm always a big fan of you know, why simple, not exponential or weighted or something like that. And it's a fair point. And I always, as a rule, I use exponential or weighted because it weights the time, so, uh, you know, makes the last candle more important, and markets have memory. You know, so if you've got 21 candles, the most recent candle we remember better than the one 21 candles ago. So absolutely we do. Um, but in, in, um, when I was, and I, I, I must stress this, I didn't conceive of the system, but I was certainly involved in the trying different ways and different testings and the like. And back when I was doing this, and now we're going back to 2004, five, um, we looked at the different variances uh, and, and the difference between uh, uh, simple and exponential was Frankly, nothing. And at that point, my stockbroker didn't offer exponential. <laughs> but when I tested, so, so I had an online charting system. When I looked at my offline charting system, it didn't make hardly any difference at all. I mean, you know, it, it, it got me into maybe an extra two trades a year on a 60-minute chart. That's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Almost. So you were, you were, you were out on that one and back. You were closed on a long there and into a short there. What, so, so this will generate, I mean, what we're looking at here is, is so this is a couple of days, and in fact, uh, yeah, so that trade there, and then I haven't looked at the chart since this morning. But, you know, the trades will, in an hourly chart, the trades will typically run about two days, maybe two and a half days will be a duration of a trade. And then when you're out, you're back into another trade fairly quickly again. You know, in an hourly chart, Forget the, the, the close part, but during the sort of 8 to 5, 8 to 6 when markets are happening, you're, there's probably not often more than 2 or 3, maybe 4 hours when you're completely out. You need serious indecision in the market. This is fairly finely tuned. If the market starts to go in any direction, and you can see, uh, I mean, here, so the market starts to go sideways, what's going to happen here in this space is you're out, and in truth, there is a, and it's either that candle or that candle, you got stopped out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine hours later, you were back into the S&P in the same direction, which is, you know, not fun, but hey, it's trading. And that's a fairly chunky gap. Although in truth, again, this is Monday afternoon, the S&P is not yet open. This is pre-market open trading. So, so the question is, I got a double top there. Uh, uh, what do I do with them? I ignore it. So, so here's what we, you know, it, it, when I'm trading a system, I trade that only. That doesn't mean I can't trade multiple concepts. 
So it can be quite fun. In this case, you were long, you get a double top. You might be long here and short there. And that's a little weird and, and, and woolly and fuzzy and the like. So typically what I will do is I will, in the index space, I will take an index and I will trade a system on it. Um, and then if I want to trade a different system, I will go and pick a different index so that I don't find myself SA40 long and short because then somewhere there will be a black hole that will swallow us. Um, what I am talk moving towards is last month we did the CFD trading plan. So you can go and trade some equities in that space and now you can come and trade this at the same time. So we've got different trading methodologies, different trading plans, different things we are trading that collectively come up. I trade uh, two methodologies in four different portfolios. So I trade momentum and I trade lazy. Um, and each of those has got two. One, uh, I won't delve into the details of it. But you can trade the different methodologies and different styles and the like. So you could say I also trade chart patterns. For example, uh, next month we're looking at reversal patterns. Um, if you want to trade reversal patterns, cool, just trade them separate so that you don't find yourself long and short the same index. Say so I'm going to trade reversal patterns, but I'll trade those on the DAX or on commodities or currencies or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I get, the, I get why we want to hop around. Um, and and the, the, the desire to hop can be strong when we have the drawdowns. Um, but I say, you know, m because it's mechanical, we want to trade every signal. So if you're trading SA40, trade in this system, stick with it. I mean, and, and, and maybe you say, I don't want to trade SA40. Maybe you want to trade the FTSE. Maybe you want to trade the US 500, whatever the case may be. Maybe you want to trade SA and US. Um, so what the one chap was doing who I was chatting to, he trades SA in an hourly chart. He trades US in a daily chart. So he does his, say, and, and he, so he does his US entries as he goes to bed at night at, at, at you know, half past 10, half past 11 as the US is. Same system, different indices, different time frames comes to a very important point is that one of the beauties of the market is we can make the market work for us we decide how we want to trade so he doesn't want to spend his evenings trading he's happy to spend his days trading but not his evenings so he closes off at six o'clock he sets alerts if he needs to he closes off at six o'clock he has five hours to spend in his evening doing whatever he wants and then the last thing in the evening he quickly checks and sees if he's got a signal in the daily chart in other words designing the trading around what we want rather than designing us around what, what we think the trading says we must do. You can absolutely. So, I mean, what I did with, with no sweat at all, and I'll show you how in a moment, I set up the alerts. So this whole thing, in other words, I never need to log on to the system. So what it'll do is it'll, it'll will alert me when I get the 721 crossover. Boom. So what do I do? I then log on and say, well, there's my price point. Tell me when the candle closes above it. And then I go away. And then I wait for the, it so happens it was an hour later, but if we go to the S&P chart, the next alert would have been, I would have got that alert there and then the entry into it. The next step, we can program it in. We can program the rules into the IG process and say run, go, do. So you're in for two days, you're paying the interest on, on the process. But the, the point is, and the way I'm always trading, is that you're never completely gearing the portfolio. So you are paying interest and that takes, that slices some of your, some of your profit off the top, or if you lose, it expands on the loss. But you've also got a cash pile sitting in the account that's earning interest at a lower rate. So you're not perfectly offset, but I'll show you that in, 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 a, in a moment. And Certainly there is interest to pay. Interest on your shorts. And you're gaining on the shorts. Not enough to retire, but <laughs> <laughs> no one pays good interest on the shorts. So it's got a position size. So when you looked at the CFD trading plan, I did a 50,000 Rand portfolio. And I know a bunch of you thought to yourself, man, if I got 50K, wouldn't be here tonight, I'd be living at large. Fair point. <laughs> so I thought to myself, brilliant, let's do this with a 10,000 Rand portfolio. No dice. No dice. 25,000 portfolio? Yeah, okay. Yeah, just. Only, only just. And I'll show you why in a moment. Um, and it's, it's because of a limitation that, 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 uh, that IG puts on us. They, the mini contract, which is two Rand a point, Minimum two contracts. So you can't go below four and a point, which is, yeah, we'll touch on that now. So 2%, remember, I'm not going to delve into this into a lot of detail because there's entire videos dedicated to it. Your portfolio is 25,000. You want to trade, you ris you're risking, not your stop loss, your risk is 2% of that, which is 500 Rand. 
Therefore, SA40, entry. This goes back to that very, very first trade. 45.115 was your entry. Stop loss 44.977. Risk per trade is 138 points. In other words, you buy, get stopped immediately. 138 points or rands per contract is what you are risking. So my risk is 138 points. I'm prepared to lose 500 rand. So I can buy 500 divided by 138. I can buy 3.6 contracts. I can't. I can buy four. Well, I buy two contracts. That gives me four rand a point. Uh, it doesn't stress me. You know, 3.6, four, yeah, that's fine. Two minis, I can live with that. Not the end of the world. Uh, your value, of course, is you have exposure of 180,000 and you're only carrying 25,000 rand. That should scare you. Everyone's nodding? We're all scared? Good thing. Uh, I bought a car last year for less than that. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a new car, but it was a nice car. Didn't have a roof either, which is maybe why it was cheap. Um, your margin is a modest 2,700. To your point, I've got 25,000. I've got 2,700 margin. I'm earning interest on 22,000. So I'm paying, but I'm earning. Gearing is 64 times. Yeah, don't, I mean, that, because that scares you so much. Don't stress that at all, uh, because we're trading points. Guaranteed stop. That 180,000 is not scary, because you've put a guaranteed stop in place. So it might scare IG, but it doesn't scare you. I'll show you guaranteed stops in a moment. It's not going to work if you, no, if you step outside of South Africa, they're going to look at your 25,000 rand, and they're going to say to you, sir, you can't even have lunch for that. Um which you need to update. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So here was the second trade. Oh yeah, sorry, trade was 45. We got stopped out of 45.689. We made 574.2300 uh, rand. That was that first trade we saw. Next trade comes along. We went at 45.378. We were going short. We're making money on the downside. So my stop is above me. 45.691. Remember, as I said, that... Uh, dun, 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 oh, hot, 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 hot. <laughs> when we entered this trade, our stop was quite far. When we entered this trade, our stop was quite close. So that stops 313 points. You divide that into your 500 rand. You want to go and buy 1.6 contracts. Minimum is four. So, well, 1.6 rand a point and minimum is four. So short answer, 25,000 doesn't work because you're going to get a lot of stops that are going to be of that size. So I'm assuming, so if I go four contracts, I'm not 2% at risk, I'm 4% at risk. In fact, I'm more than 4% at risk. To be honest, that scares me. String of losing trades, forget drawdown, you die. So short answer, doesn't work on 25,000, needs 50. I tried. I mean, I actually first tried these numbers at 10,000. And it came back and it laughed at me. You know, so what could you do here? You can do a couple of things. You can up the amount of money you have. You can up your percentage risk, which I hate. Uh, you could tighten your stop loss. You could say, okay, 21 is my stop loss, but if I halve it and make it, excuse me, 150 points instead of 313, then I can go and buy myself my two contracts at two rand per contract. Uh, this trade then stopped you out at 45.262. You made yourself 116 points. You made about 500 rand. That's not fun, hey? You risked more than 500. You risked close to 1,000 for 500. So either you've got to adjust, make a plan with your stop loss, or you've got to trade a larger portfolio. Process, you can set this whole thing up in alerts. It works an absolute treat. Um, set for the, so first you set the alert for the crossover, and then you set the alert for the price. Uh, intraday you can set it to desk, but you can, it, it, it gives you more flexibility. Back when I was trading, back in day trading in 05, 06, uh, we had SMS alerts, but they would typically arrive anything between three hours and seven days later. <coughs> We used to blame Vodacom. It doesn't really matter whose fault it was. It simply didn't work. If you're trading end of day, it's nice and easy. It's evening setups. And because of continuous market, you can enter at that point. Quick bit of, so when you're in the chart, you click alerts. Here's your moving average. MA7 crosses MA21 uh, on bed immediately or on uh, end of the candlestick. In truth, you want it end of the candlestick. Every time condition is met, send me one. And then you create the same alert where 21 crosses 7, in other words, for both up and down. And you say to it, send me the alert. 
So now you do nothing until you get the alert. That's your first stage. Your second alert you would have is price through 21, which is your stop. And you just put those in and leave them. They're just there to the question every time this condition is met. So 7 up through 21, 7 down through 21, and price through 21. Because remember, price through 21 is your stop. And you, and you would say at end of candlestick rather than immediately. And now you've got your trigger and your stop alerts in place. When you get the trigger, you're going to have to go manually add a price alert. Candle closed, you want it to close high. You set an alert that says if a candle closes above this price, alert me. So there's some PT to be done in the process. Always perfect trades. How do we measure success in trading? By doing perfect trades. We do perfect trades with a simple system. Ultimately, in time, you will generate profit. But it's about the perfect trades. I'm not going to dial on those. There is two hours of video on just one lap about the perfect trades. Uh, quickly, how to find them. They're on the side left-hand nav bar, indices, minis. There's your cash 40, 10 Rand, 2 Rand, uh, and your 10 Rand, just the normal. That's the one we're trading. You click on it, gives you the trade ticket. Minimum, two contracts. It works out at 4 Rand a point. Take yourself a guaranteed stop it's loss. A, it's a micro, isn't it? Yeah. That you were talking about there. Yeah. They, sorry, they call it micro. So they call it micro. They call it 10 Rand mini, yeah. which I think is a little bit... <laughs> um, and then guaranteed stop. The stop will charge you six points if triggered. Man, cheapest insurance policy you ever bought. Think about it. You buy insurance. You don't get robbed. Sorry for you. Here you buy insurance. You don't get triggered. Yeah, you don't pay. Uh -huh. Why are you doing that? You, you're putting the guaranteed on. There's a small premium to be paid and you need to manage it and it gets a bit messy. And when we do the, the follow-up webcast in two weeks, I'll delve into the, the details of it. The point is we're going to have to manage that stop as it's moving. As that 21 moves, we're going to be... But what we've got here is a floor below us that says if at 2 o'clock in the morning someone shoots somebody else important, it's not name names just in case, uh, the way American politics is going right now, all bets are off. Someone shoots someone important at 2 o'clock in the morning and you're long and the bottom falls out of the market, you at least had a guaranteed stop in place. Your stop, maybe it's lower than it should have been. Maybe it's not ideally positioned, etc., etc. But you know what? There's a hell of a lot of pain, and you know nothing about it because you're not feeling that pain. I mean, you know, people talk about black swans. Man, black swans these days are like turkeys. They're everywhere. <laughs> Chickens, perhaps, not even turkeys. <coughs> so I'm always entering and exiting on closes. I'm not going to dial on this. I know I've t spent a lot of time. Can you do it on touch? You can. But again, remember one of my core philosophies for me, one of my core things I look for is less trades. One of the ways to say that is don't touch my 21 and I'll trade. Close my 21. Or it's close below it. Don't touch it. I want to make a quick important point there. That's how I do it. Is it the best way? Nah. It's, it's, it's my thinking. It's my doing. It's what makes me comfortable. If you think it sounds bunk and you'd much rather do the touch, fine. Test it, run it, see if it works for you. In all cases, I, yeah, as I said earlier, I've designed these to meet what I'm trying to achieve. If you want a different sort of environment, then tweak it as you see fittest. So the key thing is, everyone always wants to be day traders. Well, here's your day trading system. And we can make it relatively lazy by pushing it out to a 60 minute, but we can trade it in the 15 if we want to be really, really aggressive. We can also set it all up in alerts, nice and simple. In a 15 minute chart, there's no well, there's points, but really the alerts are better off in the 60 and even maybe the daily. So that they tell you when and when it happens. And then as I say, average trades fairly short in the hourly chart. You'd probably be trading maybe an average of around about 50 to 60 hours on a good trade. Some of them will be shorter. You'll get some trades that run four, five, six hours. Um, in other words, five or six candles as opposed to the 40. Um, and this is an index one. So last month we did the CFD one. You can trade the two together within a single portfolio. Running 2% risk on both doing equities and indices. So some risks, notwithstanding market risk, there's always time zones. 
you want to trade Tokyo and New York, then you best be an insomniac. Continuous trading will sometimes be nasty to you. You will sometimes wake up in the morning and find yourself stopped out at 1 o'clock in the morning for no apparent reason on earth. You have two choices. When that happens, you can grin and bear it. Well, you can phone IG and tell them about the conspiracy theory and threaten them. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to laugh at you. Actually, no, they're probably quite polite. They'll listen to your story, put the phone down. <laughs> um, bad entries, we always manage with the double entry system. Bad exits are really about discipline. It's exit, you know, entries... The chart can sometimes give you fake signals. That's why we use a two-step, and even that's not foolproof. Bad exits is me, you. It's the individual. Bad exits are always us. And I quickly want to point out that I've been trading for 21 years. I lost money for five. I've been making money for 16. And some of those 16 years, the money I made, you know, took me to Brackpan <laughs> um, for holiday. <laughs> But the most important, how do I make money trading? Stop loss. Not where do I put it, not how do I position it, is that every time since April 2000, every single time a stop loss of mine has triggered, I have exited every single, I'll move it, I'll move it in the direction of the trade, never move it against the trade. That is the single reason I think I make money. You see my technical analysis. Man, I can teach that to my six-year-old niece except she's too busy playing with her new dog. She's not interested in making money. <laughs> but it's the stop loss. And when things go wrong, it's how often the bad exits. I, we do an hour-long video on risk. That's where it goes wrong. I remember the days of stop losses where they were for other people because <laughs> yeah. I was clever. <laughs> I got the T-shirt. I lost it. As always, have a plan. The key point, and I want to be richer than Buffett is not a plan. A plan needs to be quantifiable. A plan needs to be measurable. This, this evening, is a plan. Yes, you need a plan. You can take it and tweak it. You can change it. You can throw it out the window and make your own plan. But you need a trading plan. That is critical, which includes the practicalities. If your practicality is that you're going to trade America until half past 11, sleep for an hour and a half, and then trade Japan, that's not a plan. Yeah, no one's that insomniac for that long. It needs to be a real practical plan that importantly needs to fit you and what you're trying to achieve and how you're trying to achieve it. Run it with demo if you want. Run it as long as for demo. until The key thing with demo, and why I always say to folks, trade the demo. I know it's not real. I know the emotions aren't there. But what does the demo teach you? How to use the website. Otherwise, the first time you do a trade, it's like, ooh, that button or that. Ooh, off, ooh. No, no. When you come to do a real cash trade, you want to have done 100 demo trades. So you've programmed your brain so you do it without thought. It just becomes rote. That is so important. The demo is in part the system. More than anything, the demo is training you how to use the platform. That's what's critical. You're trying to, get it, you're trying to exit a position, and now you've got to phone a call center and get in a queue. And no, uh, no, 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 no. You want to do that while you're demoing. When you finish demoing, you want to be able to absolutely trade it. Uh, Follow-up is, as I said, 29 August, which, if my memory is correct, is Monday week. Uh, two weeks yesterday, 1 p.m. The session is recorded. If you can't make it, it will be online. This evening session is also recorded. September, reversal patterns. October, binary options. Uh, November and December, I can't remember. But there are sessions for November and December as well. Uh, contact details for myself and for IG support. Lawyers, let's not keep them busy. Um, I think I've hit my time and run it, but if there are few questions. I've run it two minutes according to my watch. On the, on, on the trigger? No, but when I enter the candle, I will adjust it for that. So when I'm entering the candle, because if I'm entering, so let's quickly go back. The question is, where do I put the stop on the 21? Which candle do I use? I'm going to use my entry candle. I'm going to use my entry candle. Um, and the reason being, and I think we've got a fairly good example here, where a stop is moving fairly quickly, uh, not so much there, uh, not so much there either. I mean, here, so I'm getting longs coming up here. 
but your stop's coming down fairly quickly. There's a, probably 30 points. But I, the candle I enter, which might be three, four, five, six candles yeah, post the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise, if it is, let's say we didn't get the confirmation and it's six candles later, if my stop's still there, it's far away. Yeah. So stop from the candle that you enter onto. Ladies and gents, we will park it there. Webcast in two weeks and then we're back at IG uh, next month in September. If you've got questions, you've got trips, you've got ideas, you've got ways, do you want to tweak it? You're welcome to get a hold of me. You're welcome to tweet me, email me, whatever the case may be. Thank you very much for your time this evening.